If you're experiencing issues triggering or playing your virtual instruments within Studio One using an external controller, we have several different ways that we can go about troubleshooting. Now here in this song, I have a track with a presence on it here. And when I use my external controller and play the keys, I'm not getting any sound back. But I have an audio track here. And if I play this back, I'll press the space bar. Okay, we can hear the audio for that, so we know that the audio in Studio One is working. Now, one of the first areas that you can check for MIDI is down in the transport area to the left, we have this MIDI. And when I use my controller, or press keys on that, we can see that the arrow to the left is lighting up. And this just means that the MIDI data is making it into Studio One. Now, if we move to the track here, we also have a meter. And when, again, when I play the keys, we can see that that is active. And this, you can also start by looking at this area here. So this just means that the MIDI information is getting to the track when we see this meter moving. And then down here, the arrow means that it's making it into Studio One. If this arrow is not lighting up when you're playing your external keyboard, I would check your USB cable, maybe reseat it, or you may need to double check your settings on your external hardware controller. But we know that this signal is making it in. And here I have the monitor button. This is actually turned off. So this is actually causing the problem in this instance. And once I turn that on, we have now have sound from our presence. Now something else to be mindful of is that on our instrument tracks, we have some routing controls or menus here. At the top, we can see where this MIDI information is gonna be directed to. So this is going to our presence. This is the only instrument that we have. But if I were to come to the browser, let's come to the instruments, let's close out the presence for now. We'll come to this and let's bring in an impact and we'll load up a kit. Close that out in our browser. So now that we have a second virtual instrument loaded in the song, when I click on this top menu, we can choose to have the MIDI information going to it. So if I so select the impact, let's I'm going to change the octave on my MIDI keyboard. So Okay. Okay, so there we go. We're now triggering this device, even though we're playing on this track because we're directing that MIDI information uh, to the impact. If I change this to the presence, then we're gonna be triggering that. So this is one area to be mindful of. Where is your MIDI information being directed to? Uh, and you really don't wanna change this. I wouldn't recommend changing this unless you're doing something very specific. So the second one that we have here is where are we receiving the MIDI information from? And by default, this is gonna be on all inputs. And I recommend that you keep it on this default because in this way, if you have multiple keyboards connected, whichever one you play is gonna trigger this instrument. Now, if you have a specific situation where you don't want that behavior, then you can click on this menu and choose a specific device. So in this instance, if I choose my MPK Mini, that's gonna work as expected, but if I press caps lock to bring up the virtual QWERTY keyboard, now you'll notice these keys lighting up, but it's not triggering our presence. That's because we specifically told it to look for MIDI information coming from our MPK Mini. And then as soon as I change that back to all inputs, then we can hear that our virtual keyboard is now triggering the presence. Let's caps lock to close that out. Now, if none of these are working for you, a couple other simple things that you may want to check for is just the bypass. Be sure that your instrument is not bypassed because once that's engaged, we don't hear anything. If I turn that off, also we have the power button. So of course, if that's turned off, we're not going to get any sound. And these seem simple, but sometimes it can happen that one of these is turned off or on in the case of the bypass. Now, the final thing that I'd like to mention is about the MIDI section here in the transport controls. If I click on the word MIDI, then we can actually open up this MIDI monitor and we can see uh, in detail what messages are coming into Studio One, what it's receiving. So if I were to press C on my external controller, then we can see the description here that we have node on is when I initially pressed it, that's C2. And then when I release the key, we receive the note off signal. And then we have the time message, uh, the channel, 
and some more information here. Now, if you have a continuous stream of information coming in here from like a clock or something, you can choose what this MIDI monitor is going to display. So uh, if I deselect the show all, we could just say note on and no no note off, for instance, and then that's actually not coming in. So let's okay. So engaging the sent and received. This is now working. And if you did have clock information coming in here, you can always use the clear button here to clear everything out and start from scratch. Okay, and I'll go ahead and turn that show all back on and we'll go ahead and close out the MIDI monitor. Now, one of the last areas that you can check if you're not hearing any audio, audio when trying to trigger your virtual instruments is to, we'll come to the mix console. Let's open that up. And here we can see the routing for each of our channels. And this is our presence here. And we can see that that's being directed to our main out. And that's fine. Uh, we can click on that and route this to a different location. We don't necessarily have a bus added. But if I were to, say, add a bus channel and then direct this here to that bus 1, we can still hear because our bus 1 is then going to our main out. Uh, but this could be muted, and we can see that that actually mutes the track there as well that's associated with the bus. But this could be yet another area to check out, and just be sure that this channel is routed correctly. Okay, so these are just a few of the ways that we can go about troubleshooting our MIDI when working with virtual instruments in Studio One. I hope this has been helpful, and if you are someone who is just getting started in Studio One, or even if you're an intermediate or experienced user, but you were interested in one-on-one -on -one training, I do provide that over Zoom. And so instead of searching around for hours online for answers, you can uh, meet with me, share your screen. The meeting can also be recorded and I can answer any questions that you have. And this can help you speed up your learning curve with Studio One tremendously. So anyhow guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.